Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Chip Over the Top Rugby Podcast. My name is Ryan, the host of this beautiful thing. Um, if you are new here, welcome. And obviously, if you've been here before, welcome back. Before we get into it, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below for more content. So this is not the video that I was anticipating making. Um, it is currently late on Wednesday evening here in America. And uh, I was hoping that this video that you'd be watching would be the team that I would pick to take on England um, this weekend in the Six Nations round two on Saturday at Twickenham. But Warren Gatland has once again announced his team a day early. Um, I think it's a day early in, in because it's Wales is the only team that have announced their squad, I do believe. Um, obviously, that could change by now, but it is what it is. So let's dive in. And what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do a side by side. I do have my whiteboard in front of me. Um, and so this is sort of the team that I would pick versus the team that has actually been picked. So let's have a gander. There we go. Okay, so um, the actual team, ladies and gentlemen, is Gareth Thomas, which we'll discuss. We'll discuss this. I'm just going to run through it quickly. So he's got Gareth Thomas, Elliot D, Kieran Azrati, Dav Jenkins, Adam Beard, Alex Mann, Tommy Raphael, Aaron Wainwright, Thomas Williams, Johan Lloyd, Rio Dyer, Nick Tompkins, George North, Josh Adams, Cam Winnett. On the bench, Corey Domachowski, Evan Lloyd, uh, sorry, not Evan Lloyd, sorry, Ryan Elias, uh, Archie Griffin, Will Rowlands, Ting Basham, and then covering the backs is going to be Kieran Hardy, uh, Mason Grady, and Kai Evans. So that is 1 through 23 of the actual team that Warren Gatland has picked. And it's a little bit interesting, uh, thrusting Gareth Thomas straight into the starting lineup. Um, and George North back into the starting lineup after their little injuries um, that they've clearly overcome, which is great news for Wales. And other than that, based on the performance of, you know, the bench last week, this is sort of the squad that you would be looking for. But there's a couple things that I personally, if I was captain, uh, sorry, not captain, if I was coach, that I would have done. So I think purely based on how they performed, I would have gone with... Um, Domachowski, he put in an 80-minute performance. He's clearly got the fitness. So whether it's just a case of managing, managing that fitness, managing that load, and not you know thrusting him um, too far into the sort of depths of of uh, testing fitness, you know, making sure that he's fresh. Uh, Gareth Thomas has obviously come straight into the squad. Elliot Dean made a massive impact off the bench. Uh, the lineup just straightened up big time. He only had one sort of line-out error late into the game after he came on, but every line-out that he made was just perfect. Uh, Kieran Azarati retains uh, his place after coming off the bench, did very well in the Wales v Scotland. Obviously, Dab Jenkins is captain, so he's obviously in there. Um, and with Will Rowlands coming back, a lot of people sort of wanted him to be in the squad, and I personally was on the fence about whether to have Will Rowland start or Teddy Williams because he's kind of gone with the bench players starting, some players not, but it is what it is. He's obviously rolled with um, Adam Beard for that experience and Will Rowlands is on the bench. The back row that I was hoping for is the back row that we got, Alex Mann, Tommy Raphael and Aaron Rainwright. 9 and 10, what I expected, Thomas Williams, Johan Lloyd. And then for me, this is where I kind of was expecting some change. So I was kind of thinking maybe based on Josh Adams' sort of poor, I don't want to say poor performance because he wasn't necessarily poor, but there was a few little things that he did in the Wales-Scotland game that just didn't make sense. The, you know, the, the stupid penalty where he threw the ball over the, the um, barrier, to stop the quick ball, turned into a penalty, three points, that could have made the difference in the game, really, um, now looking back. But, yeah, I would have gone with Mason Grady um, and then put Dyer on the other wing instead of Adams because, obviously, Mason Grady came off the bench, did make an impact, but he's on the bench again this week. Um, I'm guessing just to be an impact player late in the game. But 
here's, here's my rationale is that I would have gone with Mason Grady. I would have gone Nick Tompkins just because he's a steady 12. Um, and then I would have maybe gone with someone like Joe Roberts at 13 to just see what he can do and then have George North come off the bench. Imagine that, bringing someone with George North's calibre off the bench late in the game to make a big impact. Um, but obviously he's he's up to par. He's fit, he's healthy, he's good to go. So why not throw him in? Nick Tompkins and George North were a fantastic centre partnership in the World Cup. So it just makes sense to continue that centre partnership. A little bit of continuity. But I'm also wondering at what stage are we going to see maybe uh, that change a little bit? Because obviously we need to develop some centres outside of those two. And I don't know who you would go with. And that's where I was thinking maybe, OK, you start Tompkins and Joe Roberts. Because Tompkins is still in his late 20s. Joe Roberts is mid twenties, um, just to just to maybe develop another bit of a centre partnership pairing. But um, nope, gone straight with George North. It is what it is. And then obviously I would have gone with Real Dyer on the other wing if Mason Grady was on the left wing. Um, but he's gone tried and true with uh, Josh Adams and just hoping that he doesn't make any silly mistakes um, against England because obviously that is going to be a very tough. Test match and physical. So hopefully Josh Adams can right his wrongs and uh, put in a good performance. And then try. Uh, he's gone with uh, Mr. Cam Winnett, who played outstanding at fullback um, last weekend against Scotland. And why not putting put him in straight into this one? I think it's going to be a fantastic game. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, so yeah, the, the, you know the team that he's picked. I can't, I can't fault it. Obviously, I would have done a few little things here and there differently, but it is what it is. So in terms of the bench then, the bench is really where it gets interesting. So if I was to start like Corey Domachowski, I would have probably gone uh, Thomas if he was fit, which he obviously is. So he would have been on the bench. And instead of Ryan Elias, I would have gone with Evan Lloyd. Um, I do agree with Archie Griffin. I do think, obviously... With Dylan Lewis and Seb Davis coming into the squad, it's a little bit too early maybe to thrust them into a game of this caliber. Obviously, even though Dylan Lewis is now probably the most experienced, well, he would be the most experienced tight head in that group. Um, and, you know, obviously is a very good scrummager, as Cardiff uh, did find out when um, the Harlequins visit the Arms Park a couple months ago. Um yeah, he's gone with Archie Griffin instead, which is good. You know, bringing in that new sort of blood and hopefully Archie Griffin makes an appearance in that game. Uh, it'll be good for him, for sure, later on. Um, and then I would have... See, I would have started Will Rowlands, like I said, and I would have had Teddy Williams uh, come off the bench or sort of vice versa, start Teddy Williams and have Will Rowlands come off. Adam Beard was was fantastic, to be fair, but... At the same time, that line-out in the first half was dire. And if Adam Beard is the line-out caller and Ryan Elias, you know, it's something wasn't afoot, right? So uh, hopefully, you know, they're able to right their wrongs. And I would have liked to see Teddy Williams in there. I think he made a massive impact when he came on. Um, and obviously, he's gone with Tane Basham to cover the back row. I would have liked to see sort of Mackenzie Martin come in. Um, you sort of want to blood these young players kind of early into the tournament rather than saving them for maybe, you know, the Italy game right at the end. But maybe he's waiting to see something more in training out of them. But um, just like, you know, with Alex Mann and, and Cam Winnett, um, the youngsters in the squad, they did very well. And so, you know, you only, you're only going to find out about these players if you actually play them in big games. And Wales v England is probably one of the biggest games ever. So yeah, Tane Basham is there to uh, as back row cover. Kieran Hardy, would I have gone with Hardy over Davis? I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, I do think Gareth Davis did have a poor game. There's no doubt about that. But that's not necessarily his fault. The for like I said, the forwards weren't giving him fast ball. Scotland were very physical in the breakdown. Um, which slowed everything down, which which threw that off. And Gareth Davis had no choice but to pass back to his halfback pair in, in Sam uh, Costello. So hopefully 
um, Kieran Hardy can sort of bring a spark to the uh, game. We know what he's capable of um, when he comes on late. If he does come on, that is. And then, um, yeah, he's obviously gone with Mason Grady here to cover the sort of the wing, the center. Um, and Kai Evans to cover fullback and 10. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if they do use Kai Evans in this game. Um, he's been quite steady for the Dragons, I believe, um, from what I've seen. So it'd be interesting to sort of see the makeup. I, I do believe there's not much firepower, you know, outside of Mason Grady and, well, Corey Domachowski to come off the bench. Uh, I do like Tane Basham, though. I do think Tane Basham, when he played England in the World Cup warm-up games, did very well. So, a um, bit of firepower there. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I do enjoy that. I, I very much like the starting 15. Um, like I said, I would have made a couple of changes. Let me know below what you would have done. Um, and if you agree, sort of, with my 1 through 23, really. And I'll just run through that one more time. So, I would have gone with Domachowski as a continuation Elliot D and Azarati, I think, as a front row, they did very well in the second half. Uh, I would have gone with Dav Jenkins. I would have gone with uh, Will Rowlands or Teddy Williams. Um, Alex Mann, Tommy Raphael, Aaron Rainwright is the back row that I would have picked. Thomas Williams, Owen Lloyd is the 9 and 10 that I would have picked. I would have gone with Rio Dio on the left. Uh, sorry, I would have gone with Mason Grady on the left wing. Uh, Nick Tompkins and Joe Roberts outside centre. Um, with Rio Dyer on the right and Cam Winnett at fullback. Like I said, I would have saved George North for the bench, late impact player, to come on in the second half if necessary. Such experience to come off the bench. But if he's fit and healthy, it'll be good to have him in there because as we know, he is a very powerful runner as well. But it would just be nice to sort of see Mason Grady and maybe like George North in the same squad to start. Uh, but hey, it is what it is. Anyway, a little bit of a late one for me. Uh, like I said, I wasn't expecting Gatland or Wales to uh, to announce their squad yet. But hey, has anyone watched? Uh, let me know below if, uh, if you've watched the uh, Glad Glad uh, Series 2 Episode 1 uh, on YouTube. If you haven't, I'll link it below in the description because it's absolutely incredible just to sort of see a little bit behind the scenes. I love, as much as I am a Welshman, I do thoroughly enjoy when England does the Roses series for like the Six Nations and whatnot. They're, they're very um, quick to the mark on getting that done and uploaded and, and, and put on YouTube for people to watch sort of behind the scenes. And I've always wanted Wales to do something similar and they have, they're doing it, but it's a little bit, a little bit slow, or not necessarily slow, but just a little bit delayed. I would, I would much more appreciate, I think, not just me, but everybody freak up, uh, frequent uploads but i'll link that below if you haven't watched it go check it out it's class i loved it um but yeah that's the wales v england my team if i was selecting versus warren gatlin's team uh i'm really excited for this game i cannot wait and we're probably going to find out obviously england squad tomorrow we'll find out the rest of the teams as well i am sure and then we've got to set up our fantasy uh squad for this round two like I said, if you want to get involved in that as well, link below. I don't think it's too late. Obviously, if you've already started, you're not going to be uh, um, missing out on anything. But you can join my league if you're if you're just watching this for the very first time. So uh, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more. Thank you very, very much.